All right, uh, welcome to part two of the Excel sort of tutorial for your first lab report. Um, so in part two of your lab, you record a bunch of mass and volume measurements of increasing amounts of uh, soda or diet soda, whichever you ended up with. Uh, for my data, I used a volumetric pipette. So I did 10 milliliters, then 20, then 30, 40, so on. Just typing these in really quick, maybe, right? Uh, for the masses, I have 10.126, 20.121. Oh, I actually screwed that one up. Um, okay, so really quick, when you make mistakes in Excel, um, you can click and either edit it up here, so I can come back and hype 121, or I can click this cell and sort of double click in it. And then you'll notice I have a cursor in here, which will then allow me to change whatever I need to change in that cell, right? Uh, so let me get the rest of this data entered in here. So what we're gonna do is create a linear scatter plot of this data. I said in the previous video that all of your data in this, or all of the graphs that you create in this course will be scatter plots. Um, and also another just small thing really quick. Uh, I said I used a volumetric pipette for these, so these should actually dispense more decimal places. Um, since I used a 10 mil volumetric pipette, this should be 10.00. If I were printing this out and turning it in as like a report or something, um, I would want those digits to be displayed. So you'll notice up here in your toolbar, there's a little button that shifts the digits or the decimal over. So I can click, that's far too many, and display the appropriate number that I want to. Uh, I accidentally had this column selected when I did that. Uh, so it's now rounding up my number of 10.126 to 10.13. Uh, so I can either undo what I just did or come back and shift the decimal over so it displays however many it's supposed to. Right. So now I have my mass data. I should label these. These are in grams. Volume. Again, I'm editing stuff in here. I could either come up top and do it this way, or if I wanted to double click in the cell and type however I wanted to. Right. All right, cool. So uh, here's my mass and volume data that corresponds with each other. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select these two columns and go to insert and make a scatter plot again. Right. So here's my nice increasing masses with increasing volumes plot. Um, I actually screwed this up. So in the previous video, I said that the leftmost column are the x values and the right the right columns are the y values. What we're trying to pull out of this graph is the linear regression where the slope of this line of data points is going to give us the density, right? So since density is mass divided by volume, right? I need the mass to be on the y since slope is rise over run, y over x. Um, so I'm actually gonna just delete this guy really quick and cut and paste this over. Oops. Try that again, cut and paste this guy over. And now recreate my graph, right? So insert, cool. Uh, I can do a little check here because all these numbers are really close to each other on the graph. It's hard to see, did I do it right? Um, if I hover over a data point, it should give you the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So X being 10.00 cool, that's my volume. The Y is the second value listed, which is 10.126. Cool, I did it right that time. Cool. So uh, things to do on this graph, just like the last one, we're gonna add some titles. Give this a chart title, all right, cool. So my Y axis in this case is mass of Coke. This is grams. Always, when appropriate, include units in your axes labels. Um, like I said, we're making this plot to 
show and calculate the density of our soda with linear regression, so I'm just going to call the graph density of Coke. Right. Sweet. Uh, graph made, title made, axes labels made. Um, so the important thing here is that my title does not just say mass versus volume of Coke. It is conveying some new information to your audience that's actually helpful. Um, the last thing we need to do is add one last chart element. Uh, we want to add a trend line to this. So if I go back to add chart element, trend line, here's a bunch of things. I'm actually going to click more trend line options. Uh, so that should show up over here on the right. It is currently giving me like aesthetic options, but what I actually want are these. So here I have, this is a very linear plot. So I'm going to suggest or take Excel's suggestion of linear. And what I want to do is display the equation of this line and this R squared value on the plot. Right. So this is your y equals mx plus b equation. So the slope of the line is 1.0013 grams per milliliter for our density. Uh, and then the intercept, the y-intercept, so where this line extrapolates back and hits a value of x equals 0, my y is 0 0.0961. Right? Uh, your report asks you to also give it the uncertainty in the slope and the intercept. So in that Excel guide document, there was instructions for how to enable the data analysis tool pack, right? I have already done that on my form of Excel, but if you come here to data, somewhere over here-ish, there should be a little icon that looks like this, and it may or may not say data analysis next to it. Uh, you, you might just have this like icon, but when you click it, it's going to pull up a whole list of various statistical tools that are inherent in Excel uh, once you enable this uh, data analysis tool pack add-in. And what I want is regression. They're labeled or they're they're organized alphabetically, so just scroll down, find regression, hit OK. And now it's going to prompt me for some things. The Y values. Note the Y values are listed first, so click and drag through my masses. The X values, click and drag through those. And then there's a bunch of other stuff in here that you may need to use if you take upper level courses. Uh, we're not going to get into it in this Gen Chem class, but if you take quantitative analysis, so this stuff comes up. Uh, so input in my Y and X values, hit OK, and it's going to propagate a new sheet of data. So I'm now on, I was on sheet two earlier. It's made a new sheet. Uh, everything is super scrunched in here. So I'm going to do that trick of all of it's highlighted, double click between two of the, two of the columns. Oh, it didn't work. Boop. Try that again. Okay, cool. Did the thing. All right, so here is a ton of statistical stuff. Um, what you're going to need from it are the R squared values. You'll notice are listed here. In my graph, it just says an R squared of 1. So this actually gives us more digits. So it's 0 0.99999, et cetera, uh, 5. And then down here is the stuff that you're going to need to snag for your reports. Oops, sorry. The intercept is the y-intercept, 0.09607. If we go back to my thing, 0 0.9061, so 06, 607 rounds to 61. And then the number next to it is the uncertainty in that value. So the intercept is somewhere... It's 0 0.096 plus or minus 0 0.014, right? The two numbers below it are the uh, slope of your graph and the uncertainty in the slope of your graph, right? So your slope is 1.0012 plus or minus 0 0.00028, right? So yeah, uh, that is how to create a pretty simple linear regression, how to add axes to the stuff, uh, sorry, how to add axes labels, chart 
titles, Y equations, and how to use the data analysis tool pack to generate the statistical information for your reports. All right, cool. Uh, if you have questions about Excel stuff, uh, I encourage you to like use the resources available to you online. Uh, there's a ton of YouTube videos out there on how to do simple things in Excel. If you can't figure out things, uh, we're willing to help you, but like Excel is complicated, but sort of straightforward. Uh, it just takes some time wrestling with it to really figure out, okay, what am I doing and how do I do it? Um, my number one tip for all of Excel though is, and I put this in that uh, Excel help thing, is if you wanna change something in Excel, select what you want to change. So like here, I want to change this axis. Okay, I now have the axis selected. If I right click, it gives me a menu of options and somewhere in here is most likely going to be an option on changing the thing you want it to. Uh, changing the thing you have to what you want it to be. So, all right, cool. Uh, but yeah, email your lab instructors if you have questions about Excel, we're happy to help, but uh, I encourage you to try to sort of wrestle with Excel for a bit and figure it out on your own. So, all right.